Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and let's check these two July splits right here. We're also going to give them some space. We're going to be doing several different things. We have a forecast of cloudiness and rain and more rain, and we don't need a drop. I hope that I'll send it to some of you who are watching this video who really want it because we don't. Anyways, we, of course, we made these in July with our own queens. We took two frames of brood, um, a frame or two of food, and a couple drawn combs to, to fill it out, whatever it took. We're going to be giving them drawn combs. I've said this a hundred times, I'll keep saying it, drawn comb is one of the most valuable resources to beekeepers. You can do so much with drawn comb. Your bees have so much more potential and it's so much easier to control swarming. Both of these colonies, you don't see a whole lot of activity. It's cool today. It was 70 something uh, two days ago. Bees were going crazy. But today it is 49, 50 degrees Fahrenheit and it doesn't look like there's much going on at the entrance, but there's a lot going on in the hive and they can swarm just during a period like this. If they're packed, they're packed. It doesn't matter that it's a March and it's cold right now. They could leave out of here if it's warm tomorrow. And there, there's a lot of variables, a lot of beekeepers reporting in this part of the country that there are swarms. And a lot of times it's from beekeepers who have really large hives that are really healthy and uh, they end up saying adios. So, Let's get in here. Now again, we're getting a lot of rain in the forecast. Awesome. So that's what I really want to see. We're going to be checking food reserves. You can see some of the pollen patty left from the last time I fed. Look at all this drawn comb up in here. Awesome. Now, if you've watched some of our other videos, you know that we have hives that are like three deeps in size. Those hives, we're actually pulling frames of brood from to keep them from swarming. But this colony right here, I'm pretty sure it's gonna, it has a lot of potential to make a full honey crop as long as we give it the combs that it needs. So we're gonna put this lid over here. You know, probably better double check. I'm trying to do a better job about this, making sure the queen's not on the lid. She's not. And since the bees aren't flying, I'm just going to stick it probably right around the entrance there. There we go. Now we are going to have to be a little more tedious in this video because again, the bees aren't flying. Whenever the bees aren't flying, they are typically much more irritable. They, they really do much better when there's a nectar crop and, or pollen coming or something like that. Oh, I see lots of drone brood up here. Drone brood is a luxury. They don't raise a lot of it if they don't need it. So they must feel like they have enough nutrition to, to do that. Look at all that right there. Now we had to give them a little bit of feed. So this is sugar syrup. But it is very crucial. Young colonies like this don't run out of foodstuffs. Again, they might not fly for three or four days because the weather is just not going to cooperate. There's just tons of eggs down in there. And I've got a bee going up my sleeve. That's why you wear bee suits, folks. All right. Nothing but just young eggs. Oh, there's the queen right there. You can see a little bit of the what's left of the green dot. Looking good. We're going to drop her back in. And this temperature, we really don't want to keep the larvae out very long. Some people get concerned about all the heat loss coming out of the hive, but it'll be just fine. You know, we're not going to be in here for 30 minutes. You know, if I had gloves on and a bee suit, I can be much more rough. But I, I like to take my time. There we go. Wow. Look at that right there. See what I mean by pack, though? There's brood. There's food. There's bee bread. These hives are going to need an extra box, and that's what we're going to give them today. Oh, wow. Look at that over there. Woo-wee. That is a lot of bee power. Fixing to happen. And the thing of it is, we still got a good ways till our honey flow. And that's why we're feeding them. We're, we're helping them get to the point that they need to be. And we're going to cut them off food-wise here probably in a week. Hopefully we'll get some warm weather. Honestly, if it would just dry out, we wouldn't have to feed them a thing. Wow, wow, look at all that. Look at all those new fuzzy bees right there. Fuzzy bee, they're just everywhere. Hatching out. It's 
awesome. This is a wonderful time of the year to be a beekeeper. Just tons of resources and cat brood top to bottom. Young queens, dead mites, good nutrition. Not always young queens. You can have old queens too. Let's keep going just a little bit and then we are going to throw on another box because they are, oh my goodness, when all that brood hatches out, this, this hive's going to hit the trees. Look at that. Where's the queen going to lay over here? Where is she going to lay? All kinds of larvae down in there. Wow. Man, you just got to love it. Just got to love it. I just got to keep looking. I, you just can't help it. I don't care how long you've been keeping bees. This never gets old. Ever. This frame's got some weight to it. Yeah, there's some sugar syrup over here. So we won't be feeding any more of that. Looking pretty good though. Look at all that capped brood. Have I said that already in this video? <laughs> Tons more over here. But this hive is gonna go bananas. If we give it some combs, and we have plenty of drawn combs, we'll still get this hive to draw some, some foundations out. I think it's very healthy for you and your bees to draw a new foundation every season that you can. Now for us, I'm, I want a good deep off of a hive like this. So I want to stick a deep of comb here in a second, and then I'm going to probably three or four weeks later, about the time I start really getting some nectar coming in, we'll add some boxes of foundation to our colonies. And they'll draw that out, and that way we can get some fresh new comb. And I think that helps alleviate the stress. Oh, wow. This queen, look at all that wonderful brood. She has been walking all over the place, bless her heart. Man. That is awesome. Look at that old bee right there. See that one that's shiny, got that black abdomen? That's a forager bee. She's very close to the end of her lifespan. Just tons of brood. I gotta see the last frame. At this point, I just got to. Mm -mm -mm. All right, come on now. All right, we have resources and more resources. That's good. That's the way it should be. That's the way it usually is. All right. Now, let's add some space. And we'll be showing you exactly what we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna go ahead and leave this frame feeder in here. And I want to do that because, one, I don't want to have to take it out and store it. I'm not sure that we're going to be using this till the dearth period hits in summer. All right. I seriously doubt it. That hive looks good. So I'm going to straighten these back up. That's a really important to do. Just kind of line them back up the way they were before. Ours aren't perfect. When you have a frame feeder in there, sometimes it can make it a little bit more odd. That looks about right to me, close enough. All right. Now one thing I am gonna do just a little bit is throw a dab of pollen sub on there because they might not be able to fly for a few days. I want to keep that queen laying, doing what she's doing. But if I throw in a lot of sugar syrup or something like that, then that can really clog the brood nest. It's, it's already packed. Well, this hive's so good, it's against the law, apparently. Hopefully nobody's hurt. All right. Now we are going to move this out of the way. Smoke them down one more time. And throw this box up here. So important that they have that space. Can you imagine? It only takes from egg lay to the time that the bee emerges, 21 days. So can you imagine when all of that brood, 21 days from now, is emerged? That This hive's gonna be at least double. It's awesome. So here we have our 
little nifty nine frame spacer so we can get it just right. Now, if you do this a lot, you can eyeball it and get it close enough. But I'm gonna go ahead and do this right here. And that's all there is to it. All these bees up there are gonna go down and be like, what happened? All this extra space now. Now, someone's asked me, I think in the past, probably many times, about entrance reducers. And I've seen many different things. Right now, I've been keeping them, you know, somewhat closed. Doesn't really matter all that much. On a co healthy colony like that, you could have it all the way open. You definitely don't want it too shut, though. I see some folks have hives that are bigger than this. I was actually seeing one on Facebook the other day. The hive was a double deep packed with bees and they had like a chiclet for a entrance and they had a you know stuff even over that to prevent mice and the bees can hardly get in and that that really slows down your colony so this hive right here i tell you what this has already been a long video i've checked them already um last week they had nearly as much brood as this one did they're just a little bit smaller but they're still in really good shape I'm going to be doing the same exact thing to this one as I did to that last one. And then we're going to be picking this colony up and hauling it out of here because we have way too many hives in this bee yard. If I get the chance, I'm going to show you all how we load it up onto the truck. We don't do anything fancy. It's definitely not, um, you know, professional level, but it gets the job done and it works. And uh, then we're going to be showing you our honey yard, our main honey yard. And I think it's going to be a lot of fun this year. So thanks for watching our videos. If you have any comments or questions on what we did here, leave them below.